Green King East Coast IPA. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Booze Reviews. Got one here from Green King today. And to be honest, I'm really not looking forward to it. This is their East Coast IPA. And obviously the immediate fucking alarm bell with this is the clear bottle. I've tried and tried to keep this out of the light right up until I've just started this review. Um, Green King, don't really do it for me. There's just so many of their beers that are very, very average. The only one that I do like is the Abbott Reserve, which is a slightly stronger, dark, strong ale, if you like. It's not, it's not really an old ale. I'd, well, is it? I'd sort of class it in between an ESB and an old ale. It's somewhere in between there. Some people don't like it. It's got quite a big, strong alcohol backbone in it, but I quite liked it. But everything else that they've done, the Abbott IPA, Green King IPA, the Old Bob, Old Speckled Hen. Old Speckled Hen wasn't too bad actually. I've got an old, I've got, I've got a bottle of Old Crafty Hen in the, in the fridge. I'm going to revisit that as well. But I'm really trying to like Green King, and they're really not doing it for me at all. And they've got this fucking thing here, East Coast IPA. Now immediately, this looks nothing like an East Coast IPA. It's quite clear it's just come out of the fridge so it's, yeah it's clear now east coast ipas aren't clear they're very very hazy very big on the citrus and sweet fruit and i i quite like them actually out of the two american styles of ipa i much prefer the east coast ipas to the west coast but this it doesn't even look like an east coast and that's again is ringing alarm bells with me and of course, you know, I'm not going to go into ramp mode over clear bottle. They can just fuck off because they always put their, all their beers virtually are in clear bottles. I don't know why they do it. I don't care really. I'm fucking past caring with brewers who do that. You know, you can't educate concrete. Anyway, the, the East Coast that they're talking about, initially, in my naivety, I thought they were being quite clever because Suffolk, where Green King is based, is on the east coast of the United Kingdom. So I thought they were being, you know, a little bit, how can you put it, a little bit smart, if you like, saying, well, yeah, this is our British east coast, but it's not. When you look at all the hops, and I'll get onto that in the next section, they're all American style hops. And they're trying to be an American style IPA, and they've fallen flat on their ass. And I don't even need to taste it just by looking at it. But there you go. So. I've probably, it sounds like I've shot these down in flames already, but as I always say, the proof is in the tasting, but they haven't made it look appealing to me anyway. And of course, I'm the only one that fucking matters. <laughs> anyway, let's investigate this beer. Right, it's in a clear bowl. Oh, fuck's sake. It's 4%, it's 500 mil. What does it say? This is a four percent. This four percent beer fuses the punchy citrus aroma of American hops with the easy drinking refreshment of classic British pale ales. Right. Okay. So why call it an East Coast IPA then? Why don't you just call it something else? Call it a fucking Suffolk IPA or something like that. I don't know. Uh, aroma: fresh tropical hoppy, taste crisp and bold with easy drinking body. With an easy drinking body. Uh, American hops and East of England brewing. Yeah, Westgate Brewery, $17.99. They do this. They've got the names of all these different breweries that they've taken over. And I don't know whether that's a good thing or not. 
they're trying to keep it traditional, I know, but it's all brewed in the same place. So there is no real diversity when it comes to yeast strains, especially. I get a certain taste of all the Green King beers. The yeast is very similar. And uh, yeah, just to go back to, to what I was talking about, the hops. Uh, it's got Amarillo, Centennial, Citral hops deliver, citrus fruits, tropical floral and spicy notes. Pale malt gives the, the gives a clean, easy drinking body. Yeah, pale malt is your base malt. That's used in lagers and it's used in pale ales and British IPAs, etc, etc. Uh, the Amarillo is the, is the boil hop. And that's uh, presumably, they put the bitterness in there. They've got some citrus coming out of that because they've added that as a late hop as well. So they've used Amarillo for bittering. There's better hops to use for bittering in my experience, but that's what they've done. You have got, um, you've got three other American hops, the Sentinel, the Galaxy, and the Citra, three classic American hops, all delivering relatively similar styles of flavor, i.e. big citrus, big fruit, etc. They're all late addition hops. Now, what does it mean when I say late addition hops? So, hops can taste completely different depending on where you put them in on the boil, okay? So what happens is when you boil up hops, you also, you release the flavor, but you also release the alpha acids, or it should be the other way around because alpha acids are usually released at high temperatures. So the alpha acid is what gives you the bittering, or the acids in there that is what give you the bittering, and the other flavors come at lower temperatures. And of course, there is an ideal temperature for each hop. Certain hops will taste different at different temperatures. Okay, so regardless of what hops you've got in there, I know I always do it, I always read out the hops that are in beer. It, it does mean a lot to me, I like to know what's in there, but I give you a guide to what they taste like. It's not a guaranteed guide, it all depends on how high the temperature is that they've been boiled at that will give them their characteristic flavour. So there you go, there you know. Let's get it open, let's see what's going on. Now I really have bashed this, and if it's half decent, I will let you know, because I hate to write beer off, and then, well I, would, I wouldn't do it, if I wrote beer off, thinking I know it all, and then the beer actually tastes great, some reviewers will still take, say it tastes like shit. I won't do that. There's no point in me reviewing beer if I'm gonna do that. Sometimes you get it wrong, and you have to admit you're wrong. Let me see if I've got it wrong here. Again, the first thing I can get is that, is that smell off the, the yeast, and it, it, it's it's in nearly all the Green King beers. It's it's quite a sweet tasting yeast that gives the beer a a flavour, if you like, a unique flavour. But you can tell it's Green King straight away, and I can get there. But I'm also getting some fruit, some citrus, little. Well, I'm saying little. No, they're relatively big herbal notes that are in there. And to be honest, it's more aroma than I thought I would have gotten. It's definitely there. But there is like a honey and vanilla type sweetness. Now it sounds really nice, but I'm not a massive fan of it because it's it really is unique to Green King. But it's in there anyway. So that's all I'm getting. That flavour, that I'm just getting that aroma and the citrus and fruit. Now it's been filtered. That is very, very clear. Yeah, there's no no sediment in there. It's not skunky, so I have managed to keep it out of the light. I'm sure if I left this un even under this light for 20 minutes or so, that would go extremely skunky. I've had it, I took it out of the fridge and I put it down underneath the desk so there's no light getting to it. That's how fucking anal I am about clear glasses because I just cannot stand that fucking skunky smell. It, it winds me up because it's so easily avoidable. Anyway, there you go. There it is in the glass. Let's get it down the hatch. Wish me luck. Cheers. It, 
it's okay. That's as far as I'll go. I really am getting that, that yeasty flavor from Green King. I don't know what it is, but I can just pick it up straight away. Other people may not be able to pick it up, but when you've drunk quite a few of their beers, you'll get that flavor. It was the same flavor that was in, it was the same flavor that was in the old speckled hen, same flavor that was in the old Bob, which was brewed by, or which is brewed by Green King. And the other stuff, I've reviewed some some of the Scottish stuff. Is it eight, 80 shilling or eight shilling or something like that? Which is another brewery acquisition from Scotland that they've taken over and it had that taste in it as well. So they must be using very, very similar strains of yeast in all of these beers. But that's there anyway. Do you know what? It's actually not bad. There's a nice bit of biscuit malt on there, which is complemented by that yeast. There is hops, like American style hops in there, but it still tastes, to me anyway, it tastes like a, a reasonably good golden ale. Now if they would called this a golden ale, then I'd have said, yeah, they've actually not done a bad job on that. But this is just pure marketing, this East Coast IPA with a picture of America on it and, you know, crisp and hoppy. It's neither. Sorry, that's a lie. It's not crisp. It's hoppy. But as I say, it is very easy drinking. And it's not bad. It's actually surprised me. I was all ready to say, yeah, I don't know why they've bothered doing this, but I get it. But to me, it tastes like a golden ale or even a, like a full bodied pale ale, British pale ale, with a little subtle American twist on it. But it actually does work. You know, take, take away this bottle, and if somebody just handed that to me, I would say that is a reasonably good British golden ale. It's got nice biscuit malt on it that I'm getting. There is fruit on there too, nice, Delicate fruit. I wouldn't say it's big and bold like the the real New England IPAs or the real East Coast IPAs are. This is a I don't know. It's like a it's more British in its character than it is American, even though it's using American hops, if you like. But that makes for a very drinkable beer, and it isn't too bad. Still getting that Green King yeast, which actually complements this. That is not bad actually from Green King, I have to say. I was ready to bash that and saying, well, I, it is no secret. Green King are not my favorite brewers, but they've done a reasonably good job there. I have to say, that is not the worst beer I have drunk. And you know, this, this labelling, that is misleading. It's actually not bad at all. So what's the verdict on Green King East Coast IPA? Well, it's not an East Coast IPA in the American sense of the word. If they just took off that shape of America there, dropped the whole fucking American thing on this, you know, trying to bring in some competition to the craft beer market. It just labelled it as a, if they called it Amer an American twist or something like that, I would have got it. But East Coast IPA, it is not an East Coast IPA. What it is, and they've got it half right on the back when they say, yeah, it says blah 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 about the American hops deliver fruits, tropical, floral with spicy notes. It does do that. Pale malt gives a clean, easy drinking body. It does. And on the back of here it says this 4% beer fuses the punchy citrus aroma of American hops with the easy drinking refreshment of a classic, classic British pale ale. And it does. 
it's it's like a pale ale or a golden ale and not a bad one either and of course the four percent east coast ipas american pr true east coast ipas are up in the seven percent abv they're not four percent like this so again i think they've just brewed a brewed a pale ale and then just decided to jump on the American bandwagon. Just in case you wanted to see the cap, it's typical Green King cap. But it ain't bad. I will say that. It's certainly drinkable. I'm going to forget they've even called it an IPA. I'm going to pretend it's a, a British pale ale and I'm going to drink the rest of that and enjoy it. And I'm going to give it... I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. And I'll tell you why. The marks, the three marks, are going to come off for the clear bottle. But there's marks that are going to come off for the clear bottle. That just winds me up. So there's marks taken off for that. There's marks that are going to be taken off for all this American fucking nonsense they've put on there. Okay? That's why I've taken that off, them marks off. But now we've forgotten about that, the beer is not bad. It's one of the better efforts from Green King. It's certainly drinkable. If you can manage to keep it out of the light, this is a really nice session ale. Very easy drinking. I could sink quite a few of them. Nice biscuit malt on the finish. Got the Green King yeast. Whether you like that or not, it's up to you. But all in all, not bad. So I'm gonna give it a seven out of 10. Probably being a little touch generous on there, but that's what I think it's worth. And would I recommend it? If you can get it in a box, yes. If you see it on a shelf, avoid, because it's gonna stink. And remember, beer is working class champagne. <laughs>